have you checked the Hey everyone, welcome back to The Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. And you got Jaime Fuego here. And we are back to do a patron-requested review. This is actually a review of a movie we did a commentary for just a couple of weeks back. Uh, the commentary was requested by SK. The review has been requested by Mikey Mnemonic. Two yeah. awesome patrons. We, we appreciate it, you guys. We're going to be talking about the 1988 The Blob. So uh, we did our commentary, and we were all so tired at that point, we didn't stick around to do the review afterwards. So we're going to make that right, even though Susie, Susie watched half of it, and then Robert <laughs> watched it with us too. But um, everyone's doing their thing. We're trying to keep with the social distancing. Um, yeah, Fuego and I, <laughs> since we both quarantine at our homes anyway, just yeah. seeing each other, we're not really risking infecting anyone. We have our groceries and food delivered and stuff, so... We're not, uh, we're not risking anyone. DoorDash, um, dude. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. And Postmates does groceries, so it oh, works out fine. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. So, um, anyway, we are going to be talking about The Blob, and if you want to see the full commentary, I'll link to it at the end so you guys can check that out, but our overall thoughts are, well, I'll start with mine. Yeah. I know what yours are, but mine, actually, no, I... I've, I've always known that this has been one of your favorite horror movies, it so is. I'll let you go first, and then yeah. I'll give my sort of updated thoughts. Yeah, uh, I've always enjoyed how unapologetically just kill anybody this film is. Uh, as, as far as creatures go, often you'll have one that was, like, mutated from, like, a prior human or, you know, has some sort of conviction, you know, whatever. The blob is just as unthinking and just just formidable force of death as any that I've ever seen. I love how disgusting the gore is. The kill at the very beginning of the football player who you think is gonna be the hero is still one that haunts my dream since I saw it on the video shelves as a little kid at video update. It messed me up. Uh, it's it's not afraid to you know kill beautiful women and kids and uh, I mean the gore is great. Uh, this was a pairing of Frank Darabont and Chuck Russell. I, I mean two guys that went on to do big things in the horror genre. Everything from you know uh, stuff with Freddy to you know Darabont really becoming a name with Stephen King adaptations. Less horror than the ones that he did, obviously. But well, he loves The Walking Dead. Too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Der derps. Way go. But uh, yeah, man, this is it, it's just. I, I feel like it's the one of the big three of those 80s remakes that doesn't get enough love, which is why I always like am a champion for this film. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And uh, originally, when Fuego and I would talk about it, I, I understood that he loved it, but I never really... I didn't remember the movie well enough to know why. I remembered it being gross at times, but the stuff that I remembered was something to do with a drain, but I didn't remember the details of it. That's a but good I one. did remember... <laughs> Uh, the homeless man getting the, the the blob onto his hand. That's about all I remembered. And upon the rewatch, man, I really enjoy this movie a lot more than I thought I did. Because, yeah, the effects are really great. That drain kill is awesome. So much better than I remembered it being. And I remember why this movie stuck out in my head now that I see the effects again. But I just... I hadn't. I think I'd seen this movie maybe twice in my life before. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and it's probably been fifteen to twenty years since I had seen it. So I was operating on old memories and refreshing them. Man, I didn't even know that it was. You know, we're now about ten years removed from Entourage, Kevin and Dillon. that's where I knew <laughs> Kevin Dillon from. So when I saw this guy, I was like, "Is that like Kevin Dillon's father? Or like, is that like Matt Dillon's father or something?" Because I was trying to put the timeline together. Like, He's no, fucking that mullet. That's actually him with the mullet, and he he held it together, man. If like thirty years later, he still looked as good as he did in mm -hmm. in uh, Entourage, but that was really I, every time I saw him, I'd be like, "Victory!" Yeah. But um, but and also the actress from uh, well, she was in The Stand and she was in mm -hmm. Saw movies. Um, mm -hmm. but her, her name eludes me, unfortunately. But yeah, so. she played uh, the the protege. Yeah, um, Jigsaw's protege. Uh, in the earlier movies and she's the final girl in this and she's kick-ass in it too you know yeah. i mean that yeah. so uh, i i absolutely loved it this time around it's it's Hell not yeah. it doesn't beat the thing still the thing is yeah. still better for me as far as effects and story and everything goes but i i, it's, I will it's definitely admit that the, the thing the thing the, the thing. thing is a much more serious film the, the blob, while it's serious, it's also got a camp factor to mm -hmm. it that the thing definitely does not have and the fly doesn't have either. The, the, the blob is definitely 
more of a fun romp, yeah. you know, of sorts. More more of a popcorn flick, I guess you could yeah. say. Yeah, you, you know. the, the Blob would work alongside Killer Clowns from Outer Space, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, it's a bit more serious than that, but the mm-hmm. subject matter, you can't take that seriously, just like yeah. the clowns. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, and also, this, I, being, yeah. this being 1988 and all, it's... Killer it's, Clowns was 88. Yeah, I think that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. This was a, a, a much more self-aware movie. The fact that the, the snarky little asshole kid is, like, talking about wanting to go see the slasher movie with the boobs and the deaths and stuff this was at the point in the 80s where there was much more of that like the the meta-ness of the screams and stuff that would come five six years later and stuff it was starting to really rear its funny (laughs) face i guess so um and let's get into well yeah we touched on the acting already um it the, the, otherwise it's it's typical 80s bit players and yeah. things like that yeah, but and no, I mean, no the one story bad. is simple i mean we're talking a, a meteor yeah. flies and you know knocks into a small town some goop comes off of it homeless man tries to touch it goes on his hand he's found by these two high school kids they take him to get looked at by a doctor lo and behold it escapes off of his hand gets onto a kid and just starts growing with the more and more people that it consumes and it, it basically it's it's gelatinous acid yeah is essentially the way it works on yeah. organic material mm-hmm. so and, and yeah. it just amasses and gets bigger as it's eating everyone from dale from the walking dead who's mm-hmm. the sheriff to a, a young very beautiful looking erica leniak i mean playboy playmate of the year uh yeah so i i mean it's and it just gets bigger and grosser and grander and uh it also has a nice dark ending too which i appreciate Mm -hmm. left it wide open for a sequel that we never got unfortunately Um, which i'm surprised by quite Mm -hmm. frankly but i can't imagine those effects were easy or cheap to pull off no no i've watched some of the behind the scenes stuff on that deluxe blu-ray and it was (laughs) it was such a process man which is just so much power and respect to just the practicality of the 80s man yeah um, so, yeah, story-wise, I thought, I actually thought it's, it, uh, there's some horror movies where the story is so simple that you can try and pick it apart for being too simple, but some horror movies, the simplicity of the plot only helps the overall experience. Yeah, because, because lean and mean. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> need to have a bunch of, con- like, if this movie was made nowadays, you'd have... A whole subplot where it's a government organization trying to contain some of it to mm-hmm. use as a bioweapon. Yeah. Like, they wouldn't be able to resist. You which know what we, I mean? Which we kind of, kind of have when Did they, they, try, oh, I guess when they try to bit. contain the situation and stuff. Yeah, but it wasn't, it, but it wasn't, that was, that came at the end. It wasn't yeah. a subplot. Like, this would be something that would be a B-plot through the whole through movie. Moving. You're seeing true, true. This, the military side of yeah. things while the our main heroes are just trying to save everyone from it. Yeah. They're like... We need to stop it, but we also need it. You know, yeah. like that's the way it would go nowadays. I like the simplicity of just there's there's a town on the run and by the you know it's a couple of kids that know what's going on, but by the end it's the whole town that knows what's going on. That's part of what I liked about Critters too. Yeah. Same yeah. exact sort of thing. Like the Critters just are 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 so in abundance that everyone knows about them by the end, and it's how does everyone deal with it? Yeah. I, I always like that when True. when movies do that. So Agreed. Agreed. this this is a, a a perfect example of it happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less of an in, in the shadows thing. It's it, it's definitely more so the Terminator Two Aliens type of approach to you know horror filmmaking. I guess so. Yeah, bigger and grander. Everyone's aware pretty much. How can you ignore it because it's right there in your face? And yeah, the, just the, the, the uh, what I said, when I said gelatinous acid, what I meant was every time it touches anyone or anything like that first kid that you mm-hmm. think is going to be the, the protagonist when it falls on him and he like, you know, it's, it's a couple of, a couple of the images from this scene are used as promo material. First, when he's like reaching out from under it, that's used in a lot of promo he's materials. He's trying to grab his arms. He's trying to grab his arms, right. Yeah. And then uh, also when it cuts back to him and like half of his face is like sloughed off and his jaw is way down here because he's just completely melting away. It's just yeah. just awesome, man. Yeah. Stuff that they don't they don't take the time to do nowadays. Yeah, it takes a lot more time and mm-hmm. effort and I mean physicality, which is which is the big thing as we kind of finish up the effects, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, where else do we need? I mean, the blo- well, the effects. Also, there we should mention there's some, of there's some stop Early motion. Type, yeah, yeah, I guess is, that's, is what that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch the, the making of That's mm-hmm. what I assume it is because there was, you know. That's a, that's when it gets to its huge, huge right. form at the end when they had to And they have to use some miniatures mm-hmm. and stuff like that to make yeah. it work. But yeah, but still, I mean, the, the effects team did such a kick-ass job on this. And, you and can't I mean, be practical, yeah. You, you, you can't. There's no no way. And that's why it's, it's up there for me as part of the big three with The Fly and with The Thing for the best 50 
80s remakes made in the 80s, you know, that had just disgusting practical effects. Do you so. think that could be remade nowadays? Or They've since... been trying to remake The Blob for a while. Samuel L. Jackson was attached a few years I back. I know, but... but... Could Rob they, Zombie was I don't think they'd be able to do it without making the whole damn thing CG. And yeah. so, are we far enough along where they could make it convincing, or do we have to wait another ten years? You think? That's a good question, man. I, I think. Would that you want to we... see a fully CG block? It's kind of the same thing as as, as when they saying, make the thing prequel. Well, 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 mm-hmm. well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's true. It could end up going that way, where people are like, "Nah, too much CG." But it, it's almost the same as like it's a classic like Jaws. Where if you're going to remake Jaws, the big bad guy would have to be CG now. Um, because you can't wrangle great yeah. white sharks and you don't want to have a jowly effect. You don't want a shark that's not going to work. So you're going to do it like the shallows, right? It's going to be CG. I guess there's but a part of me that But we're far enough just... along to have a good shark. Are we far enough along to have a good CG blob? In your opinion. I think the blob would probably be CG, but then maybe the actual... Like like they could use some practical on the people, the close maybe? Up kills. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I don't but know. then you Since have we... to make sure your CG blob looks like yeah. the practical blob that you're going to use to kill people, <sighs> and mimicking those. Thing. Yeah, mimicking that physics, those physics might be tough. Honestly, at this point, I hold the, the effects in this film in such high regard that I would say, let them do it CG. Let them just. It doesn't matter because this movie's always going to exist. Whip it out and let's see like what you can do with CG with the blob. I I would be down. So sure, okay. there's there's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So um, I think between this and the commentary, we've we've glowed enough about this movie. So yeah. stay uh, good. Thank you uh, very much to Mikey Mnemonic for requesting this review, and uh, we appreciate you guys for watching it. Uh, if you want to become a patron, the link is in the description box. You can tell us wonderful movies like this to revisit. Again, I had no reason to revisit this unless. Uh, un- until it was requested by you guys so I'm certainly glad that you did and it's it, I think I'm discovering the best movies right now through the film festivals that aren't canceled and uh, Patreon yeah. it's uh, otherwise uh, I'm not really discovering that many great things so. well, well because there's so much new stuff that's coming out and then so much that we still hadn't seen from decades past that mm-hmm. it's, in the, it's an onslaught it's overwhelming so it really you know, is you're but... helping us catch up guys <laughs> but yeah that's going to do it for our thoughts on the blob let us know what your thoughts are in those comments down below thanks again for watching I've been Cecil Laird Gracias, seven, Jaime, and, Fuego. and remember stay scared <laughs>